All right, guys, so today we have a uh, issue with a nose sprocket on a chainsaw bar. And, oh, that was the actual drill bit I needed. That's pretty funny. So um, I tried to pound it out with a punch and uh, my ADD got the best of me and I missed and I smacked my thumb with a four pound sledge. Why I was using a four pound sledge to do this, I'll never know. But uh, with some chainsaw bars, you can do that. With others, it's gonna be a little bit more dicey. And so um, what I'm gonna do is just put it in a vise and drill it out. I've already done one hole. Um, so I'm gonna do the others just with the drill, just slow and easy. What I did find is when you get close, when you get close to coming through the other side, just reverse it and go through so you don't break your drill bit. Let's get closer to center here. We're in no hurry to get through this. Just like a drill press, we'll just go slow and easy. Just being careful not to bend the bar too much. All right. I might finish that off just because I don't want to... I'll get started on the other hole. I'm sure this drill bit's nice and sharp now. Stop that. Come at it from this side, probably. Put a pretty decent amount of pressure on the other side. Now why does it do that? Note to self, drill a pilot hole. Note to you guys, learn from my mistakes. And there it is. So, we've got the rivets um, out. You know, for the most part, they're out. You guys that do this all the time might be saying, you know, you dumbass, that's, you know, you're, you're screwing every, you're screwing your bar up by doing it that way, and could be the case. So, just try to loosen this a little bit. loosen this it's this last one right there that's giving me grief there he is get him out of there how we get him out of there well, probably could have wallered it out with the drill or used a bigger drill bit so I don't know if you can see that moving around in there but it is definitely moving around in there you know, steel could make a light bar just by removing the incredible amount of paint they have on these things. Bring it on. There she is. So we've already taken out the rivets. Uh, we've got the new replacement. This right here, no plug for Forrester. This is not a paid endorsement. Um, these are about, you know, 15 to 20 dollars if you can find them on the internet. Um, Replaces part number three zero zero three six five zero two five five one. It is, I think, with uh, these sprockets because I was trying to find the sprocket noses. I was trying to find three eighths oh five oh, but all I could find was just three eighths. So I think it's just a universal fit for three eighths uh, chainsaw bars. So there are the rivets. Take a little brush here. And Get some of that stuff out of there. Some of the garbage that was in there. Fits in there nice and snug like. You know, 
not really snugly enough. I will say that. Ooh, what I like about this is you can't see that on the steels, they don't have a little greaser there. But on these, you do. Okay, so put these guys in here. Moving that one really kind of snug these other ones up. We'll put a little, yeah, I'll get a new piece of tape. Put a little piece of tape right there. Keep them all in one place. I've got a little piece of, uh, uh, you know, square tubing right there that we're using. Um, I'm not sure how well that will work, but that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to turn this over so I get a flatter surface there. And now we're going to, the official term for this is swaging. Let me get another little piece of buffer steel here. Nice little piece there. Elevate it, piece down here to keep it level. So I get a good solid surface. Now we'll just swage these in one at a time. That seems to be fairly decent. Put this out here. See if I can be a little more convincing with this big old piece of three quarter inch steel. Dress it up so it doesn't look as cavemanish. Yeah, it's way better. It's much more better. Ready to rock. It's already greased, so let's say we. Put it on a chainsaw, eh? So I run 3.8.050 on all my power saws. Um, it's simple, easy to remember. It's, uh, you know, very good cutting combination, in my opinion. Now, an 036 in a lot of applications will be able to host a 25 inch uh, full house, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. But I'm gonna put the old 25 skip on it because why not? Maybe I just wanna keep it on. And so, as you can tell, you know, on this particular side of it, the bottom side, it's got some wear. So what we'll do is we'll flip it upside down to give it an even amount of wear on both sides. Now this is a fairly new bar, um, and that is because, like I said, I switched a lot of my stuff from 063, 404, over to 38050. I can maintain a high RPM in the cut, higher RPM in the cut. So I'll get that to where the drive length is just so-so, and then do my Buck and Billy Ray thing here that I saw him do a long time ago where I put pressure on the nose of the bar and then I tighten everything up and uh, eh, maybe a little tighter but it'll loosen up. Might loosen it before I cut. This saw is about as old as I am, this 036 and uh, it's one of my favorite saws ever made. But there it is. New sprocket tip on a, on a newer bar, um, 25 inch 38050 skip chain running on an 036 that is 31 years old. Thanks for watching.